called a coelliptic orbit. So next couple of burns coming up are the transfer burn and the final coelliptic burn. And that will complete the rendezvous phase for us. And those burns are coming up in about an hour from now. We're just standing by waiting for those views from Crew Dragon. We expect them to be using the floater camera, which is uh, not a fixed camera inside Crew Dragon. It gives them a little more flexibility to get out of their seats. Dragon, SpaceX, we see good video. Are you ready for the event? Resilience is ready for the event. Copy, we're go. Okay, everyone. Uh, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome on board Crew Dragon Resilience. Uh, Victor, Shannon, Suichi, and I are very pleased to welcome you on board as we journey to the International Space Station. Uh, currently, we're going to give you just a little bit of a tour of our home uh, for the next uh, few hours as well. And so starting, I'm sitting here in the cockpit or the bridge, if you will. Um, so this is where we are for launch and for landing, as well as when we get ready for for docking. Uh, if you take a quick look here, you can see we've got three primary displays, that touch screen displays that we use to control resilience. And so we can bring up our procedures, we can bring up maps that show where we are uh, over uh, over the earth. And uh, it's actually uh, quite nice, the touch, the touch screens that we have here for controlling uh, resilience. We also have some backup uh, controls here, buttons, um, so that if anything should happen to these displays, we still have some of the critical functions functionality that we can we can accomplish uh, with these these buttons that you see here um, so that's uh, that's pretty much it here in the uh, in the cockpit and so now I'm going to pass you off to Ike hello everyone Victor here. Baby Yoda and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, hatches. Just about 24 hours ago, we entered resilience through this side hatch and to open that hatch again until we are safely uh, splashed down in the ocean and the recovery forces are bringing us uh, aboard the ship and taking us out of the capsule. Uh, so when we dock to station, we will actually leave and go into ISS through the forward hatch, which is uh, up here, and it's based on the body axis of the, the space. Spacecraft, so the nose cone opens forward and, and you can go into station in that direction. And at this time, I'm going to hand you off to, Sh to Soichi. And so we're not getting audio from you currently. I'm sorry. Hey, uh, uh, good evening and uh, konbanwa. Uh, this is Soichi Noguchi. I'm now talking through the uh, lower tier of the capsule. Many people see the seat, but uh, Dragon Capsule has amazing vast area of storage. And I'm now uh, top, uh, sitting over the uh, uh, mid-deck lockers, and uh, this is quite a roomy area. There might be some other creatures kind of slowly coming through you. <laughs> And this is also a very important uh, stuff. Uh, this is the uh, storage area for the EVA equipment for, for us when we go up. And this is actually powered payload, and it is now powered, and it's uh, like a refrigerator, which holds uh, ice cream. No, 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 uh, science material. Right. Science material for the ISS. Right. Okay, that's the vast uh, uh, storage area underneath our seat. Now I'm gonna turn over to Shannon. All right, thank you, Suichi. Um, as you can see, with the four of us in this uh, Dragon capsule, it's quite a bit more crowded than it is was with just Doug and Bob. And so I thought I would show you some of what it's like to actually live on a spacecraft like this. You'll see that we actually have um, bags stowed all over the place, and this is for a number of reasons. 
You can pan over here, Soichi, you will see up here, we actually have some bags full of our emergency equipment, and we've got bags that hold our um, supplies, such as the shirts and pants that we are wearing now, came up in these bags. Um, you'll also see that we've got things such as food and water stashed around, because every once in a while we like to have a snack. A little bit later on, I'm going to have some trail mix. Um, these are the water bottles that we have to drink out of. You can see it can be a little bit challenging because there is uh, air mixed in. After you drink some of your water, you've got got air in there, so you may wonder, well, how do you drink the water and not just the air? So, in order to drink water on the Dragon, you have to open it up, and then you have to gently rotate to get the water up near the top, and then you can take a drink, and the rest of the time you can just play with your air bubbles. So. That's basically what daily life is like. We sort of dance around each other to try and stay out of each other's way, uh, eat and drink, and wait for the next engine burn. So at this time, I'm going to hand you back over to Mike. Okay, thank you, Shannon and uh, Suichi and Victor. And so, I tell you, we're going to uh, we're going to close out um, this little tour of uh, Dragon Resilience here with something uh, very, very special. Actually, um, this is something that is a tradition within the uh, within the astronaut office. And uh, just to give you a little history on it, so when you first are selected as an astronaut and uh, you come in for your basic training, you go through about two years of training to become an astronaut. And then once that is complete and you graduate, we give um, the, each, uh, each candidate, now becomes an astronaut, but they're an unflown astronaut, and they get a silver pin. But once you've passed that 100 kilometer mark, you then get a gold pin. And we have one member of our crew who uh, does not have the appropriate uh, accoutrement for his <laughs> uniform, and so it's worth it to be able to give Victor Glover his gold astronaut pin for passing 100 kilometers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Crew one. Crew one. Again, uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, this is uh, just an unbelievable experience. Uh, it has been fantastic so far, and we're looking forward. You know, we're about 21 hours into a six-month mission. And so we are we are very excited for us, and uh, and I think I'm just going to close it with all for one, crew one, one for all. all. Bye everyone. Hopper, thank you so much, and I should thank to the entire Resilience crew for that amazing tour, and great event. Congratulations, Victor. Uh, you must be so excited. And this concludes the event. All right, we copy uh, Jay. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for uh, letting us give a tour. <laughs> and you can see Victor Glover has still not stopped smiling, and honestly, <laughs> neither have I watching that tour of Crew Dragon. Yeah, and he got his official gold pin for passing 100 kilometers. That must be amazing. We mentioned earlier today um, that he did know that specific number of the height he had reached. Now he is out in space with the Crew-1 team. <laughs> you can tell that this crew really have bonded over the last, uh, last several months training together. Um, and Victor, really proud of his new pin. I'm so excited for him. As first trip to space, uh, but a really interesting tour of Crew Dragon. Obviously, Commander Mike Hopkins showed us the seats uh, that they launched in, and he mentioned, you know, we've seen some really great views of that, but uh, Soichi showed us what's underneath the seats, yeah. and we got a good glimpse at that storage, and so he mentioned there was a fridge, not for ice cream, <laughs> but it is a fridge that helps us stow uh, science samples and experiments going to and from the International Space Station. And then uh, Shannon Walker showing us some of those snacks. It's relatable <laughs> to me. Yeah, and it's cool to 
get this kind of a tour because for the most part we've been seeing them in their seats. It almost makes Dragon look so small, but with Suichi underneath where the cargo goes, you can really see how large that cabin really is. Um, and even though there is four people in there, does you know they, they don't have tons of room, but it is pretty spacious enough for them to be able to maneuver around. Yeah, and you could tell Victor was, uh, it looked like standing up, you know, he's in space, so he's not standing up, but <laughs> he uh, he was able to fully stand in the vehicle and still have plenty of room, and I think he's a pretty tall guy. Yeah. So yeah. it does look pretty roomy in there, and uh, as they mentioned, things are still going well on their journey. SpaceX, this is Dragon for Timeline. Dragon SpaceX. AJ, just wanted to confirm with you that uh, we don't have any other planned activities that need the floater camera, and so we might go ahead and start uh, doing some cleanup in here around the cockpit, getting ready for uh, for approach. We concur, and that's a good plan. And Dragon SpaceX, we confirm the camera is off, so safe to stow. Okay, we copy, uh, thank you. But again, just absolutely amazing event. Uh, as we mentioned, they were using that floater camera, so they were able to really take us around Crew Dragon, which was very cool. Uh, and just confirming with CORE here in Hawthorne that they won't need that camera again until they start picking things up and getting ready for docking, so they were going to stow it away. But that was such a special look. I'm so glad that we got the opportunity to hear from them. Um, and the next major milestone for Crew Dragon will be coming up in about 50 5-0 minutes from now, and that'll be the transfer burn, the fourth of five major burns on the trip to station today. We're expecting that at 2.50 p.m. Pacific time. We're expecting Dragon's thrusters to fire a little more than 30 seconds to put the highest point of Dragon's orbit just two and a half kilometers below the station. While we wait for the transfer burn, we can take some more social media questions. This one from Haley. What kind of personal items do they bring with them, if any? We talked about this a little bit. Um, a lot of the astronauts, they only get a very small a very small amount of space that they can pack and bring things. Uh, but a lot of them like to bring photos of their family. That's a very popular a very popular thing to bring. So they'll put them up inside their crew, co crew quarters. As we mentioned, it's kind of the size of a small closet. So they try and make it as homey as possible. Uh, they're also allowed to bring up other special items or mementos to them, maybe pieces of jewelry. Um, and they also sometimes bring up things for their friends or family and take photos of it for them. So all of these things are screened before they make their way to the International Space Station for safety purposes. But they do get the opportunity to take up some personal items. Yeah, it's great for them to be on a six-month trip uh, that they, they're able to at least bring a little bit uh, of home with them uh, on the station. Absolutely. We're still excited. And SpaceX Dragon for food. Dragon SpaceX, we're ready to copy. Hey, Jay, uh, we show we're going to be coming up on our fourth meal on board. And so uh, just wondering if you have a recommendation, suggestion for uh, which meals we should be uh, getting that from for the next, the next one coming up. Uh, I will look into that and I'll get back to you. Okay, copy. So just so you know, we have had our primary ascent um, breakfast, lunch, dinners, and snack. Copy on, copy on those. Thanks.
you just heard them discussing the food with the crew. They make sure uh, anything that's consumed or used whatsoever, they relay back to the crew in uh, Hawthorne because everything needs to be meticulously tracked aboard Crew Dragon and the International Space Station as well. Uh, so we have another note, this one, not a question, but a congratulations for Victor Glover, who, as we saw on that little Crew Dragon tour, just got his new wings. <laughs> so excited for him. That means he reached the 100-kilometer mark, reaching space. Uh, when the astronauts finish their two-year training period, they receive a little silver pen, and they don't get that gold pen until they reach space. So really exciting to see that presented to him on orbit. Yeah, and with us being able to watch that live, that was really amazing that we could share that moment and that they allowed us to share that moment with them Absolutely. on board. Absolutely. And we are still answering your Ask NASA questions, so to get that to us, go on Twitter, use the hashtag AskNASA. We will do our very best to answer as many as we can. In the meantime, this is a view of Mission Control Hawthorne. These been monitoring the vehicle for 24-7, uh, you know, since they launched just 24 hours here coming up in just a little bit. But let's see another question. What do astronauts do for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's? <laughs> they actually, these astronauts will be on board for all three of those uh, holidays. And we don't want them to feel like they're missing out. And so there are small celebrations that happen aboard the space station. That's different for every crew, uh, just depending on how they want to celebrate. But there are a few decorations up there, especially for Christmas. Uh, I know there was a sneaky elf up there a few years ago. Um, let's see what else. Oh, they'll, they'll sometimes celebrate with a special meal. I know for Thanksgiving, they have a lot of the traditional foods that we still have on Thanksgiving, too, anything from sweet potatoes to turkey. So they get those times to uh, spend meals together, and they also get those days off like we do here on Earth. Um, and they also spend time talking with their family and friends. Sounds awesome. They still get to celebrate the holidays just like we do. We've got another one. Are there any difference between Endeavor and Resilience? That's a really good question. Um, by design, not really. Uh, they both are designed to be fully functional uh, Dragon vehicles. Um, Endeavor was the first test vehicle um, that we did use in demo.